Shut the flippin' front door and welcome to Idled Out, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're talking about the five cringiest reunion moments in Survivor history. I know, uh, how could I pick just five? I say completely without hyperbole that there are dozens of cringy moments across Survivor's 40 reunion shows, courtesy of the players, Jeff, and random little girls in the audience. Oh, hey, Joey King. While I tend to enjoy the reunions if only to guess which players the hair and makeup team absolutely hate, reunions are admittedly pretty non-essential to the Survivor canon. Well, non-essential if you don't like cringing. They're very essential if you love to cringe. So come along with me if you're all about checking in with Boston Rob, surviving shame, and getting a little sleepy on one of the biggest nights of your life. All that said, let's count down the cringiest moments in Survivor reunion history. At number five is Kat's top-heavy monologue at the Survivor Blood vs. Water reunion. After talking to the major players of the season like Tyson, Monica, Tina, and Sierra, Jeff does his customary end of reunion hopping around to all the also-rans, giving some of the less relevant players the chance to get in a sentence or two and soak up those last few seconds of their 15 minutes of fame. So off we go to check in with your Coltons and your cats. My favorite part of this segment is the big applause line when Jeff asks Vetus if he'd play again. Yes, we love disappointment. When he gets to Kat, he asks her if she and Hayden are still dating, and references her objectively hilarious line about how no one wants to date someone who doesn't make the merge. This is an obvious cue for Kat to say, yep, I love Hayden. He's a great guy. We're still dating even though I didn't make the merge. Ha ha. And then Jeff can move on and talk to Laura Boneham or whoever. That's what every normal person understands this to be. But this is Kat we're talking about. Instead, she goes on a rambling monologue about how they're still dating, but it's tough because they live in different states. Then she brings up how she's made a few modifications to her body. As a result, you know, I've made some arrangements on my own to just, you know, get get on his level a little bit. So, whatever. So maybe I'm a little top heavy now. I get it. Wait, but what are you I'm, talking? I'm a little top heavy now. You changed your body. I changed a little bit of a look. You'll be shocked to hear that Cat and Hayden's relationship did not last much longer than this very moment. I guess he didn't appreciate all those top-heavy mods that she put on. Regardless, it's great to hear she was hitting the books and making her brain bigger for Hayden. Good for her. That is what she meant, right? Yeah, number four is Rosie O'Donnell's sing-along that kicked off the reunion of Survivor Marquesas. For Survivor's first four seasons, Jeff Probst didn't host the reunion. He only picked that gig up in season five, probably because no one else wanted to be responsible for actually giving Brian Heideck money. The Borneo, Australia, and Africa reunions were all helmed by a very uninterested Bryant Gumbel. Gumbel's a talented Emmy award-winning broadcaster when he cares, which he clearly did not care about Survivor, and I doubt he even watched the show. And Ethan Zorn, now millionaire. <laughs> yep, and don't forget to check in with Big Tim after the break. For better or worse, Rosie O'Donnell took over reunion duties for Survivor Marquesas, and so we went from someone lacking all enthusiasm about Survivor to someone who is way too enthusiastic about Survivor. From her tightly clutching poor Colby's abs to having all the non vesepia players eating mystery food for a new car, we could fill this entire video with rosy moments. But it's the opening song that does it for me, a Marquesist-themed sing-along set to the tune of the Gilligan's Island theme song. That is, uh, wow. Here we've got a season that had important discussions on race between V and Sean, a first of its kind monumentally game-changing power shift, and the invention of the most aggressive style of play ever seen on this show. And instead of talking about any of that, we're singing about Kathy's urine. Incredibly, this is still not even the cringiest thing Rosie did in the mid-2000s. Anyone else seen riding the bus with my sister? 
At number three is Jeff asking Eric if he's still a virgin during the Survivor China reunion. A minor plotline of Survivor China is Eric's virginity, a personal conviction he holds very dear. Another minor plotline of Survivor China is Jamie thinking Eric is cute, a personal conviction she holds very dear. Jamie ends up getting voted out around the midpoint of the game, so these two plotlines don't really go anywhere in the second half of the season. But in their time in the game together, the soft-spoken Nashville musician and the bubbly college student really did have an undeniably adorable connection. So much so that at the reunion, Jeff asks Jamie if she and Eric reconnected after the game, and she talks about how they got lunch together after their flight home and have been dating and in love ever since. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm glad they're happy together. Let's just leave it there. So it begs the question, Eric, dating Jamie, are you still a virgin? Of course. Of course. Jeff, you can't just ask people if they're a virgin, especially in front of their family and their girlfriend and their girlfriend's family. Jamie and Eric are actually still together to this day, married and with a kid, so, um, congrats, Eric. You did it! At number two is Jeff asking Courtney if she has an eating disorder, also during the Survivor China reunion. Wow, Jeff was on fire during this one, wasn't he? All right, so this one needs a little context. If you didn't watch Survivor China Live, Courtney's weight was discussed ad nauseum in tabloids, online, and on entertainment shows on a weekly, if not daily basis. You literally couldn't go through a checkout line at the grocery store or turn on the TV without hearing about the anorexic Survivor contestant. Every week on these shows, there would be a segment about Courtney's weight and reckless and irresponsible speculation that she's anorexic. As Courtney remained in the game week after week, if I'm recalling correctly, the conversation then morphed into a discussion on if it was responsible of Survivor to put a woman this thin on their show, probably because the sensationalism of just showing clips of a thin woman on a reality TV show had worn off. It was ridiculous. I mean, even real news outlets were reporting on Courtney's weight. To quote a 2009 ABC News article, Courtney Yates, the tough but emaciated New York waitress who has fought her way to stay on the reality TV show Survivor, has fans asking, will she die of malnutrition before the season finale? The article then goes on to quote some Survivor Sucks posters. Excellent reporting. So yeah, this was always going to be something they'd want to address at the reunion, both to defend Courtney, as well as, and I'm sure this was the major motivation here, to push back on the speculation that Survivor was irresponsible in putting her on the show. I do think there's a way to address this issue delicately, and it involves giving Courtney ownership of the situation, as well as the final word on it. Surely, we can address this topic with the sensitivity it deserves. You started this at 93 pounds. That was your starting weight. You came off the show at 86 pounds, so you lost 7% of your body weight. Anorexic? Eating disorder? What's the deal? Answer the question. Jeff, you can't just ask people if they have an eating disorder. Courtney, for her part, says she's just skinny. Her whole family's skinny. End of story. Then Jeff closes out the segment on Courtney's weight by congratulating her on putting on a few pounds. Um, any way to salvage this reunion? I guess we can just give Denise $50,000 for her sad and definitely 100% true story of losing her job because she's simply too popular. 100% true. The cringiest reunion moment of all time is... Yeah, you knew it. David Murphy proposing to Carolina Eastwood during the Survivor Redemption Island reunion. I've gotten a lot of mileage out of this clip lately, and y'all seem to really, really respond to it. Like, it seems like you all really enjoy it when I drop it in the middle of a video with little to no warning. All the comments say so. So I thought what better way to reward everyone than by talking about this moment at length. Now, I actually think the Redemption Island reunion, Murphy excluded, is surprisingly pretty good. Although Jeff does briefly pitch a Russell vs. Phillips season, let's all thank our lucky stars that one didn't happen, we get Rob and Russell sort of burying the hatchet, 
an emotional grant explaining why betrayal in the game of Survivor hurt so much, and Philip looking real sharp in that black suit and purple tie. Jeff even talks to almost everyone in the first two rows, which, you know, considering some other reunions where he talks to, like, only Ben, I'm gonna give Jeff credit for this. But it's when we check in with everyone's favorite grandstanding juror, David Murphy, where this one really goes off the rails. Jeff asks David if he's found love on the island, and he did. Her name is Carolina. Carolina from Jalapau Tribe. After Jeff briefly struggles to recall what season Carolina was on, Jeff gives David the go-ahead to spend the rest of this reunion on one knee. So off into the audience he goes to ask Carolina to marry him, and she responds in the only way you really could respond when David Murphy asks you to marry him. You challenge me. Down right now. Down. You drive me nuts, but at the end of the day, you've made me happier than I could ever <laughs> ask to be. So will you marry me, please? Shut the flipping front door. <laughs> I'm sorry, I really am. From David's pleas to the shut it down to Carolina's obvious discomfort, it's like this was made in a factory to be as painfully cringe as possible. Even Amber, a woman who should be elated because she just added another million dollars to her family's bank account, looks like she'd rather be anywhere else. Same. TBH. I never thought I'd actually say this, but can we, like, hear from Philip again or something? Got nothing else for ya. Don't shut the flippin' front door on me. Like and subscribe, please, and I'll get you more Survivor content just like this. Until next time, don't get idled out.